In the meantime, uh, who's next? Where are we where are we headed next on the phones? Give me a. That would be Len in Grant Park, Illinois. Your turn. You're next. Hello, sir. Well, hello there, Mr. Limbaugh. Hey. I am humbled to speak to the greatest freedom fighter on earth. Well, I don't know about that, but I appreciate you calling, and I'm glad you're out there, sir. Well, I wanted to make a comment. You know, everybody talks about you know Trump and why he's so popular and all this stuff, and. You know, I remember back when Reagan got elected. It was the first Republican I I have ever voted for. And he was the right man at the right time. And that's where Trump is. He's the right man. Well, you know, it's interesting that the establishment hated Reagan. The Republican establishment hated Reagan. Everybody. But but notably, the Republican Party hated Reagan. They They didn't like conservatives. Still don't. And they also said Reagan was a dunce. They said Reagan was an idiot. Reagan was sleeping through cabinet meetings, and Reagan was a B movie actor, and he was this or that. It's it's standard operating procedure. The way the establishment insults their opponents is to try to tell everybody that they're dumb, they're slow, they're stupid, they're unsophisticated, they're dangerous. You can't trust them with their finger next to the nuclear launch button. You can't. Do, they just the same thing. No matter who the candidate is, it could be Newt Gingrich. It, it could be Sarah Palin, it could be Ronald Reagan, it could be Trump. Now, it doesn't matter who it is, that's the way they go after and try to disqualify people. Well, that's true, but if you look at the time when Jimmy Carter was in there, uh, with Iran making all its threats on us and everything all the time, and everything he did to try to subdue them, you know, was just a joke. I mean, the guy was an idiot. Uh, I mean, that's the way I felt about it. And I felt that the country just couldn't stand four more years of that. Well... Yeah, agreed. But Carter's greatest damage was on the economy. I mean, oh. that, that just, he just wreaked havoc on the economy. I mean, yeah, I was 23 years old, and I couldn't keep a job because as fast as I'd go to work for somebody, they'd close up. Yeah, you couldn't keep gasoline in your tank either. No, no. Staying in line for it. Yeah, I don't know. But, uh, yeah, like I, said, I, I honestly believe that with Donald Trump, I, I don't think anybody's going to beat him. Because he's the only one saying anything that makes sense. Well, let me ask you a question about that, since I have you, and since you've just made that uh, statement. Do you think, do you think, uh, you, so you think Trump can win the nomination? You think Trump can beat Hillary? Uh, well, yeah, no no question. No question, because I'll tell you, the Republican Party is, is running around in, in uh, apoplexy. And they're telling everybody, oh, my God, if Trump wins, we're finished. Hillary's going to mop the floor with, oh, my God, there's no way Trump, the independent's going to be running away from Trump. Oh, my God, we're dead. Trump can set this party back 25 years if he gets a nominee. That's what the Republican, there's no way he can beat Hillary. If Trump wins, the Republican Party, as we know it, is done. They'll either, they'll either have to come in line with the people or they'll never get another vote. Uh, what if the Republican Party loses? Nobody wanted him. How many times did he run? Nobody wanted him. And he was just another liberal. I'm, I'm just saying, if they if, if they do something like that, if, if the Republican Party gets a nominee they want and they lose, what does that mean for their future? They're done. So they're done either way. That's what you're saying. If Trump yeah. wins, they're done. And if Trump loses, they're done. Yeah. I, I don't see him recovering from this. They've got such a bad reputation now. You know, since this Obama thing, that nobody trusts them, believes them for anything. What's the point? There's no reason to vote for them. Yeah, well, I, uh, I don't know that it's that bad, but I'll tell you what. There are a lot of people scratching their heads over why in seven years the Republican Party hadn't found a way to disagree with Obama. That's their purpose. They've run for election. They've campaigned on their promise to stop Obama, repeal Obamacare, all this stuff. They don't do any of it. How in the world, after seven years, can you not have an identity of opposing Obama and standing with a majority of the American people? Here, grab audio soundbite. This is, uh, this is, uh, this is, uh, number, number five. I didn't just make this up. Charlie Rose last night on his show on PBS talking to Mark Halpern. Well, these people do not they talk to each other. You know, it's amazing. On all of their shows, they all appear on each other's shows. I mean, you talk about talking to hear your head rattle. That's all these people do. 
They never have anybody on that they don't agree with or don't understand. They're all just chatting with themselves, be it the round table on Meet the Press, you name it. There's no outreach to anybody else who's not already in their crowd. It's stunning to watch this. Anyway, Charlie Rose with Mark Halpern last night. Charlie Rose said, are you saying, Mark, that if the Republican Party unites against Donald Trump, that they can't stop him? The establishment now will not accept Trump as the nominee. They will fight him to the end, including at the convention if they need to. And I think they'll run someone else if he does become the nominee. Meaning somebody's in the field? Or, no, um, someone like Mitt Romney or Mitch Daniels, someone else okay. to step forward to say, we've got a safe place to vote because we cannot be the party of Trump. Romney Ryan at the convention is the way the party would go. And they'd say, America, you were wrong. We're giving you a second chance. Now, he doesn't just make this stuff up, folks. All of these people talk to each other. And the Republican Party leaks what they want. Certain people know they go to Politico's, one of their favorite sources to leak to. Halpern didn't just pull this out of thin air. He just said that last night on Charlie Rose, that if Trump is the nominee, the Republican Party will not accept it and will go back. It won't go to anybody currently in the field because there isn't anybody that jazzes them. And the They're going to go back to Mitt Romney or maybe Mitch Daniels. And then they'll choose Ryan as the Veep again. And they're going to go back to the American people and say, look, we gave you a chance to elect this brilliant team in 2012 and you blew it, we're going to give you a second chance. To, this is Now, my point is, if he's saying this, somebody, somewhere, in whatever circle he travels in, has also postulated this. And not the first time we've heard the Republican Party thinking about reaching out to Romney, not the first time we've heard Romney thinking about running again, not the first time we've heard it. And I guarantee you something else. If Trump isn't the nominee, but Ted Cruz is, they'll do the same thing. They won't support a Ted Cruz nomination either. At the highest levels of the Republican Party, they're in a constant panic. Because they're now, even if they do succeed, if they were to succeed in taking Trump out, they're now they're looking at, at Cruz. And that scares them even more. Don't doubt me. Back after this. 